From terrifying neck injuries to spinal cord contusions, these are some NFL players who almost died on the field. Let's start with what happened to Mike Utley. On the first play of the fourth quarter, as Eric Kramer hit Robert Clark for a touchdown, number 60 Mike Utley playing right guard was blocking David Rocker. As Rocker jumped to block the pass, Utley fell forward hitting the artificial turf head first. Utley's head bent forward before snapping back on impact. Utley got hit in his sixth and seventh cervical vertebrae. But here's the crazy part. Even though he found out later that he was mostly paralyzed from the chest down, Utley didn't let it break him. As they carried him off the field, he flashed a thumbs up to the crowd. I mean, imagine that resilience. That thumbs up became the signature move. It's the symbol of the Mike Utley Foundation. Sometimes us fans get so caught up watching the game that we forget a player's whole career can come crashing down at any moment. Just ask Kevin Everett. Upside stumbles a bit, gets up to the 10 to the 15, Hickson. Meets a quick ball of Buffalo defenders and he goes down at the 21 yard line. And there's a Bills player face down there too. Looks like Kevin Everett. Now the ambulance has made its way out onto the field too. So boy, this is the worst thing you ever want to see anybody have to deal with in a football game. The medics had to jump in, spending a solid 15 minutes stabilizing him right there on the field. They rushed him to a nearby hospital, and even though he was just 25 years old, his spinal cord was nearly severed. This led to Everett being permanently paralyzed. In these situations, it's tough to point fingers and blame anyone. It's just the nature of the game. But man, some folks couldn't help but wonder about Gibson when Jermichael Finley took that hit. It's been non-existent. Since then, Second what a hit. hit. Gibson with a hit. Mingo picks it up. Flag has been thrown. Finley is down. And there go the whistles and the Packer training staff running out there. Time stood still, the whole stadium holding its breath. Finley gets ushered into the ICU and gets diagnosed with a spinal cord contusion. This injury officially led to his retirement in 2015. After hearing stories like that, you might start thinking, I never want to get tackled on the field. But hold up, because the risks aren't just about hard hits. Welcome Trent Brown. Back on November 1st, 2020, Air decided to sneak into his bloodstream through an IV. Next thing you know, he's in the hospital for three days. Former Patriot and current Raiders right tackle Trent Brown had a scary health situation before Sunday's game. Brown was hospitalized and missed the game after a pregame IV accidentally injected air into his bloodstream, a potentially deadly complication. He was expected to start Sunday's game after missing the previous one due to COVID-19. No word currently on Brown's condition. Brown nearly went into cardiac arrest right before the game against the Cleveland Browns. But you gotta hear this straight from the man himself. I almost died before we played them last year. Imagine that laid out on the floor thinking about his kids, contemplating retirement because it was that close to the edge. However, that was some kind of freak accident. This next one was pure bad blood intentional. Offensive lineman Taylor Lewin gets blindsided by a cheap shot from Andre Branch. All right, let's see again. There's... Hit Taylor Lewan. You can see him right there. That's a play that they they try to take it out of football. There's a flag on the play, but it looks like it'll be after the play. Whoa. Doesn't this get a little heated? Yeah, there's going to be a late hit. Tempers flare, and it was absolute chaos. After this, the first fight of the 2000 NFL season broke out right then and there. I'm sure most Dolphins and Titan fans remember this, just like the Colts remember what happened to Brandon Williams in 2017. Deontrez Mount barrels forward, helmet to helmet collision with Brandon Williams. Williams starts melting backward. The impact was like something out of a movie. He collapses on the field and looks unconscious. The moment made everyone's heart skip a beat. And Deontrez Mount comes in and goes helmet to helmet here. With Williams, and he just sort of melted backwards. He's been down on the field since, so now he's sitting up a bit. The Colts medical squad jumped into action, putting Williams on a stretcher and wheeling him off the field. 
Now, this next one is recent. With the Saints up 14 to nine, Zach Miller gets this incredible 25 yard touchdown pass. But hold up, because the defender managed to make Miller's knee pop out of place. The injury was so bad that Miller needed emergency surgery right there in New Orleans. This next one is truly terrifying. Picture this, Eric Wood is running next to Mike Gillisley, who's on a path to a touchdown. Mike gets tackled and bam, Eric takes a hit to the leg. Now the images, they're disturbing. Clear as day you see it, his leg completely snapped. Second and goal, Brian Groy has come in as an eligible receiver and into the end zone goes Mike Gillisley. The poor lineman caught up in the aftermath of his teammate's touchdown run had to be carted off the field. Arguably, the hardest hit in NFL history led to a gruesome injury to tight end Jeff Swain. The play starts off looking promising. Swain leaps to catch the ball in the air, but before his feet can touch the ground, bam, Demario Davis delivers a helmet-to-helmet -helmet massive hit that knocks Swain out cold. It's, it's uh, no, Jeff Swain, the tight end. Play here. This is not good looking. Number 87, Swain comes across the middle trying to track the football and helmet to helmet collision there with Demario Davis. The impact was so brutal that the whole stadium fell silent. It felt like time stood still and everyone in the stands was holding their breath, worried for Swain's life. The gravity of the situation was clear when both teams knelt in prayer while trainers attended to Swain on the field. Tight end Heath Miller faced a similar injury when he caught a pass and then out of nowhere, a massive hit straight to the head. And now Ben with a deep drop, buying time, extending the play as he has been doing for years, and that pass is incomplete, and Miller really takes a shot. And, and to get, I didn't see a flag. If there is one, it's buried down there, is unbelievable to me that that was not called. That is by the very definition of what I've been told. People thought it was a knockout blow and there was genuine fear for Miller's life. You could feel it in the air. But here's the kicker. The ref decided not to make the call and the game just rolled on. Now this last player is one of the saddest stories in football. In August of 2001, during a regular NFL training day that was hotter than usual, tragedy struck. Corey Stringer, a 27-year-old player for the Minnesota Vikings, suddenly started feeling unwell. But despite the signs, the trainers didn't quite nail down the treatment for heat stroke, even after getting him into a cool trailer. Things took a turn for the worse, and Stringer became unresponsive. Minnesota Viking, Ohio State Buckeye, and Ohio Prep star Corey Stringer began training camp. It was over 100 degrees and they made no modifications. They did the, what they had planned for that day, two three-hour practices on the first day. Five or six players had to get IVs. Corey was one of those players. They rushed him to the hospital, but about 13 hours later, he succumbed to multiple organ failure. Now these are some of the saddest stories in NFL football. However, there's one position where near-death moments are way too common. Click on the next video and see for yourself.